Honourable Chief Minister, respected dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamualaikum. We are honoured to have your esteemed presence here for the inauguration of the Punjab Technology University. The mission of PTU is to advance scholarly knowledge and innovation in the areas of science, technology and engineering. PTU also strives to expand the base of engineering knowledge to original research and for developing technology to best serve the needs of the society. The university is committed to developing and implementing the most effective teaching approaches as employed by the leading international research universities. To start our day, I would like to call Umar Faru to recite a few verses from the Holy Quran. <laughs> Next, I would like to request Dr. Uwaseh, Chairman of the Honorable Chief Minister, Chairman of the Commission, Minister of Education, Secretary of Education, uh, August audience, members of the press, Pastor. Our journey for the Punjab Technical University started more than eight months ago. The Chief Minister invited me to his place to congratulate me on being named as one of the top 35 innovators in the world by the MIT Tech Review. In the meeting, I proposed to the Chief Minister that the best thing we can do for Pakistan is to start world-class engineering universities in Pakistan. At the time, I thought I was selling my vision to start a new university. Instead, eight months later, it turns out that he was selling his vision to start a world-class university in Punjab and his passion to go along with it. In the last six months, not a single week has gone by when the Chief Minister has not called me to remind me about starting this university. This day was simply not possible without his unstinted support, relentless follow-up, and impossible deadlines, for which we thank you, sir. I was asked this morning why does the university in the hall? And that's a valid question. But the answer to that is also simple. Pakistan does not have a single university in the top 200 universities in the world. And a good university, single-handedly, can change the fate of a country. When I was at MIT several years ago, I used to wonder what is, what is so special about this place. And I found out that MIT alumni have founded 29,000 companies worldwide which employ 3 million people and generate an annual revenue of $1.9 trillion. If MIT was a country, it would be the 11th largest country in the world by GDP. That's the impact one university can have. And that's the impact we want to replicate in Pakistan with the Punjab <laughs> Now, 
The MIT has had such an impact because of the interdisciplinary research and, 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 and teaching philosophy. But more than that, the entrepreneurial streak that it infuses in its students. MIT's unique culture of focusing on real world problems led to the commercialization of the radar and decided the fate of the World War II. That's the impact a good university can have. This university has been a result of, of meticulous planning and thought by several people in the government. Secretary of Education, Secretary of Law, Principal Secretary, and additional Secretary of Education have worked tirelessly on putting together a structure which combines the best of both the public sector and a private sector university. The university will be established in the public sector, but it won't be run by the government. We want you to start a university with the resources of a government, but not make another third tier Sarkari university. It will be run and managed by a crew of experts, philanthropists, and professors from the private sector. And that, I think, is a huge accomplishment. We've also started reaching out to top technical universities worldwide for collaborations, particularly the Middle East Technical University in Turkey, who would be starting a joint degree program with us shortly, for which we are very proud. We are starting today in a small temporary campus on the sixth floor of this technology park. And we will plan to move out to a purpose-built campus close to the airport in the newly formed Knowledge City. We are starting here because we, want, we didn't want to defer an educational project based on the completion of a construction project. As Iqbal once famously said, Jahan e taza ki afkar e taza se hai namo. Let's all pray that what we start today outlives all of us. May Allah make this university the Jamat al Azad of the modern Muslim world. I thank you. Stanford University triggered the establishment of Silicon Valley. MIT and Harvard of Route 128 in Boston with over 1,500 high-tech companies and the North Carolina State University and Duke University of the Research Triangle. An example of success story, which was also given by Dr. Seth, companies established by MIT have annual turnover exceeding $11 trillion, which is roughly the size of Korea's GDP. Finland, despite a major banking crisis in 1993, loss of trade and high inflation invested in R&D, and its economy grew. It ranks today first in the number of researchers per thousand population. With a population less than half that of Karachi, its one single high-tech company, Nokia, has more exports than all of Pakistan. Then we have an example of the East Asian Tigers who followed this example of development through development of high-tech universities, innovation and entrepreneurship in the 60s and 70s. South Korea, Hong Kong, Singapore, and Taiwan. The fruits are clear. Singapore's economy grew 189-fold since becoming independent from Malaysia, its per capita rising from $500 to $36,000. 
because it focused on the development of human capital, innovation, and entrepreneurship. South Korea became an economic superpower in less than four decades. Its GDP rising from 4 billion to 264 billion to over a trillion now. One of the key factors in South Korea's success was investing in higher education, research, and development. Today, emerging Asian economies are beginning to adopt this model as well. Turkey, which has the highest accessibility to higher education, which is about 38%, already has five universities in the top 500 universities of the world. In the last 20 years, it has built 43 technology parks attached to its universities. The largest one at Mito, East Technical University, Istanbul Technical University, and Bilkent have over 700 companies generating revenues of over $750 million. Malaysia is yet another example investing in its edge city in the Johor Peninsula across from Singapore in an area of land which is four times the size of Singapore. They plan to establish seven mega universities expecting to attract over $100 million in the next two decades. Even Saudi Arabia has started to focus on knowledge economy through building the top of world class universities. The King South University is ranked among the leading Asian universities while the King Abdullah University of Science and Technology has been established with a $10 billion endowment. Some of the facilities include the fastest supercomputer in the Middle East and one of the most powerful in the world capable of 222 teraflops operations per second. India is also not far behind. It is investing heavily in higher education. Over the next five years, India will establish 200 new universities. Of these, nine new IITs will be established, bringing the total number of IITs to 16. I am therefore very pleased that the government of Punjab, <coughs> under the visionary leadership of its chief minister, has taken an excellent initiative in establishing the Punjab Technology University at Lahore, which is modeled along the lines of MIT. This university will certainly become the driving force to bring an IT revolution in Punjab, leapfrogging the IT industry, which is less than $2 billion today, to compete with other Asian economies. The HEC will ensure all possible support to this university to ensure that it becomes a leading institution in Pakistan and in South Asia. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Varani. Now I would like to invite Mr. Mustafa Shahjal Rahman, Minister of Education, to share his words with us. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Honorable Chief Minister Punjab, Mia Muhammad Shahbaz Sharif Sahab, respected Dr. Javed Dagari, Chairman, Higher Education Commission, respected Secretary of Higher Education, respected Chairman, Punjab Information Technology Board, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, media personnel, I am pleased to welcome you all on behalf of the Higher Education Department on this auspicious day. This inauguration marks a historic undertaking as the BTU aims to be the first institution of its kind in Pakistan that will bring bright people from diverse fields to solve real world problems with continuous improvement and innovation. And this is also uh, one of the very major uh, initiatives of our dynamic Chief Minister Mia Muhammad Shahbaz Sharif and I must congratulate my leader Mia Muhammad Shahbaz Sharif for inaugurating today this technology university here. This fall the university will offer a master in computer science program, a two-year professional degree track for students holding a four-year undergraduate degree. Students will have the option to choose between concentrations in their program, strategic systems, on entrepreneurship. The, the Punjab Technology University will be funded by the government of Punjab, but run by an autonomous board. So we will get the best of both public sector and private run university. This will allow instruction and teaching to flourish and resource to be well secured all the greatest benefits of the students and their intellectual development. The university will initially be housed on the sixth floor of Alpha Software Technology Park, which offers an area of high quality facilities and state of the art telecommunication networks, auditoriums, and seminar rooms equipped with latest multimedia.